it's not just property. You know, it's, you know, it's my sense of security that was taken from me. It's, you know, years of work that was taken from me. A longtime downtown Portland business owner wants the people who stole from him to return his things and be held accountable. Welcome to KGW News at 5 o'clock. I'm Laurel Porter. During a chaotic night of protests, the owner of Billy Galaxy Vintage Toy Shop says thieves took advantage of a situation and made off with thousands of dollars worth of collectibles. As Morgan Romero found out, he already knows where the stolen goods ended up. We've been here since 1995. It's so ephemeral that you know, it's just interesting to see, you know, the joy it brings people and the different reasons people collect it. The reason I got into it in the first place is because I am obsessed. It's why Billy Galaxy has guarded his vintage toy store the majority of the last 80 plus nights. Riots and looting associated with downtown protests add insult to injury from the governor's stay home order. There were definitely people approaching this business that, you know, had ill intent. Early in the morning on July 27th, he says a few people with ill intentions succeeded. Any theft or looting is a little trickier because we cannot just order a product to replace something that's in here. These are all special items that are not necessarily very easy to track down. When Billy got to the storage area, he saw the locks had been messed with. So he went and checked his security camera footage and he saw two people toting off a bunch of stuff. And it was so easy to do this, in fact, that they returned a second night, as I suspected they would do. And uh, I actually interrupted a crime in progress on July 28th. Before he caught them, Billy says they took at least $25,000 worth of collectibles. Through the toy collecting community, he tracked down where some of his items are being sold online and even knows where it's all stored and one of the culprit's identities. We've done quite a bit of the footwork for the police on their behalf. Hopefully they can finish it up and get us our stuff back. But so far, he feels the police response has been subpar. And I understand that the police are, you know, hated right now by a lot of people and they are overworked and stretched too thin and, you know, probably lacking resources. Portland police tell me officers continue to respond to calls for service, but protests stretch their resources thin, therefore delaying some response times and dragging out investigations. I don't think what happened to me is necessarily unrelated to the protests. I think people are taking advantage of delayed police response and committing crimes. Crimes that violate a business owner's safety and life's work. I'm not going to just roll over and let things happen like that. I mean, I've spent my whole life building this business, so essentially this is my life. Morgan Romero. And I am going to protect it by any means necessary. KGW News. Billy says he messaged the woman he believes is selling the stolen items online. He says she responded a few hours ago and told him she'd help get him his stuff back. We'll stay on top of this story. Crimes ending up on the internet are helping police ID suspects. Now what you just saw there was first posted to Instagram by Anadote 503. It was of a shooting incident last Saturday that landed this man, 27 year old Skylar Jernigan in jail. Police say Jernigan fired a gun toward a crowd of left wing demonstrators. Jernigan is known to attend right wing rallies. And federal authorities have arrested a man they say hit one of their officers with a baseball bat back on July 27th. Investigators used still images from live streams to identify their suspect. Federal marshals arrested 24-year-old Dakota Ray Horton this week after recognizing him in the Rock Creek area on Monday. Police are also able to learn things in real time during protests from what's online through um, what we've seen, what we can hear on live streams, through social media for, um, that some of the, the activists are putting out there, they know exactly what they need to do to get a response from the police. Last night, Portland police declared a riot at the federal ICE building. They say some protesters threw rocks and other items at them. Officers used tear gas and made two arrests. 
Oregon's latest numbers in the pandemic continue to hold steady. The OHA reported another 301 new cases of COVID-19 today and four more Oregonians have died. The two week average of new cases has plateaued, but new daily infections have still been hovering between 200 and 400 a day. Multnomah, Washington and Marion counties all reported more than 50 new infections today. Umatilla County appears to have slowed the spread and has been approved to return to phase one reopening. Take a look at this line stretched around the block again today at local credit unions. I went by one in Northeast Portland at On Point Community Credit Union. Hundreds of people lined up hoping to receive a one time $500 relief payment from the state. State lawmakers approved the payments for Oregonians who still haven't had their unemployment claims paid out but it's first come first serve. There were long lines at many credit union branches last night too. Today, some people in line told us they got there before 6 a.m. I was kind of surprised of the lack of security. I thought that they'd be more prepared with uh, people wrapping around the building. I think uh, once the news got out from yesterday's explosion of people, um, they didn't really gear it up a little bit. On Point says it's dedicated more employees to make sure people maintain distance while in line. Some credit unions and banks are offering appointments to keep people from having to wait outside. At On Point, if you're already a member, you can apply online. Phones are ringing off the hook at tutoring companies nationwide. Parents are hoping to snag a private tutor for their kids to get some in-person learning after the virtual school day is over. Nina Melhoff explains how it works and how much it costs. This month, I put out an email questionnaire to 10 private tutors and tutoring companies in the metro area. Eight of them got back with answers to these. What has demand been like? What model of tutoring are parents asking for? How much do they charge? Do they go to students or do students come to them? Here's what we found. What has demand been like? 100% of them used words like unprecedented, higher than normal. Some are getting double or triple the number of calls they usually get. What model of tutoring are parents asking for? All of them say parents are mostly asking for in-person tutoring help, either one-on-one -on -one or small group pods of kids in the same grade and classes. Two to five days a week uh, is, is the cohort model. So we are providing a very deep supplemental support well beyond what we did prior, which was twice a week for an hour, one on one. This is up to five times a week, three hours a day with a group of five students. For kids who are a little bit older and more mature, it's kind of, uh, you know, an hour or two uh, here and there. How can we, you know, get this certain assignment done? You know, we're struggling with this certain you know, al algebra topic, how can we learn those equations? How much do they charge? Tutoring pods get a group rate, each child paying between $25 and $40 an hour. One-on-one -on -one in person is much more expensive. We got answers ranging from $80 to $115 an hour. For the in-person services, we require COVID compliant uh, conditions. So families are completely prepared to provide masks for their kids, have social distancing by uh, virtue of a large physical space. Do they go to students or do students come to them? Of the eight tutoring companies we heard back from, three of them have students come to their office. Two allow tutors to go to your house and two are doing online only sessions with the possibility of in-person in the future, depending on COVID case counts. Virtual learning is harder for the younger kids to stay on task with no structure to their day. For the older ones, it's easier to fall behind on skills and concepts. Parents, you're working too, and you're the bad guy nagging about getting online and homework. If you can find like-minded families who can afford to split the cost, calmer evenings could be had by putting that responsibility on a tutor. If a student has foundational gaps, we will fill those gaps. If they need pre-teaching for the next school year, we will do that. If they need enrichment, if we have a student that's 
um, you know, well above uh, academic grade level, we will meet them so that they're challenged and have a, a positivity about, about school. When you start to get confident at something that was hard for you, you know, you start to get good at math and good at science, and then you start to believe, hey, I, I could learn anything. I could do anything else because, you know, this math used to be so hard for me, and now I've gotten good at it. If you're going to go the tutor route, start calling now. Slots are filling up. There are some great community resources that provide free tutors, English as second language, and after school programs all over the metro area. We have those links as well as the breakdown of all this information on KGW.com.